Hi everybody, I'm Jane Sliska and I'm back with another video. Um, we're excited, Jane, my um, videographer, I guess that's the name of it. It works. Uh, <laughs> we're excited, we're, we're just enthused about this whole process of having everybody kind of see what I do and paint along with me or just be inspired. That's the most important thing. So. Um, I'm going to like rehash some of the things that I've talked about in previous videos, but first of all, uh, I'm going to paint on this canvas, and I paint my canvases red. I use a cadmium red medium, and I don't buy expensive paint. I buy kind of the student grade or the cheaper uh, just to cover my canvas, and I use a, um, a sponge brush to do it, because, and I paper plate for the paint because I don't want to mess up my palette. And just to get started. I know canvases are expensive. You can practice and paint on illustration board, watercolor paper, uh, anything else. It doesn't have to be always canvas, you know. So, And the most impar uh, exciting part of the whole painting is the beginning, is the start. And always, you know, get, th get enthused when you're starting and laying out your painting. So don't worry so much about having a finished painting all the time. You know, even if you spend a whole afternoon starting three paintings, but um, just, you know, as long as you have that enthusiasm, your paintings will always have a freshness to them. So anyway, um, here is my palette. Jane, can you zoom in on that? I put fresh color on here this morning. And I'm going to list in the future on my website the kind of eight basic colors you can use and then some additional colors. but. You don't have to get all these colors to start off painting if you want to start off a painting in acrylic paints, but pick the ones that you like and um, go from there and, and experiment. Don't be afraid to use paint. You can see I have lots of paint on my palette. This is a stay wet palette with a rubber, I mean a sponge on the bottom and the paper and the sponge is soaking wet. So when I put the lid on this at the end of the day, my paint will be really fresh tomorrow and the day after and the day after. So that's the thing. And then I got some brand new brushes today. Jane, there's still tape on. We tried to tape these down, take a picture of them. These are my uh, Princeton brushes. I'm not plugging Princeton. I just, that's what I use. And this is the um, number 12 and the Princeton Dakota. Dakota series 6300 and the number six. This is a half inch and this is an inch. And I love these brushes. These are really all I use. And it's bright angle, I yep, think? Yeah, angle. They're angled. angled. Yep. Um, I've had some questions about my water bucket. <laughs> and you can buy this water bucket at various art stores, the big box art stores. And it, it has sections, which is really great because it keeps your water cleaner for longer. And uh, clean your water often. A lot of times when I'm teaching a workshop, the students don't want to take the time to get up and empty their water. And then what you're doing is you're just painting with dirt. And you don't want to do that. So you want to keep your painting fresh. And then your water bottle to always keep your paint nice and fresh and, um, and wet. So today we're going to paint the human figure outdoors. And um, it's pretty exciting. I just have a very, all my pictures are bad. I'm not even going to share this picture with you like on my website or anything because I want you, if you're inspired by this painting, to go and find some photographs that you have of maybe your family or friends or go out and take some photos of your friends in the outdoors and pose them how you want and then take it from there. Use your imagination to uh, put them in a setting that you, you want and it's really fun. And if you're having fun while you're painting, the viewer will share that joy when they're looking at your painting and they'll get a smile on their face. So, here we go. I, had, I took this bad picture <laughs> of people on a pier, I think in Anna Marie Island, years ago. And so here we go, I'm gonna wet my brush. I'm using a big canvas today, this is 30 by 30. And um, this is, I'm gonna do three people standing on a pier. I'm going to start with my hooker's green, real deep, almost black color, loading up my brush with paint. And instead of drawing my figures, I'm going to make the silhouette of my figures outdoors. I want this to be powerful. And I'm going to fill up my canvas. I don't want to put a figure in a landscape. I want it to be about them. 
So I'm going to take this one guy right here. This is his head. I'm not going to worry too much about the details. We'll fill that in later. Jane, is that a good angle mm -hmm. while we're working? And then he's kind of got this great slouch. I don't worry about making the clothes on them. I'll do that later. And I can't even see the rest of this. There, there he is. Here's his head. He's got a little pot belly. And his arm is right here, but you can't see it because it's in front and I'm just doing the silhouette. And then I'm going to make another person like right here. This is his shoulders. You know, let them kind of tell you what's happening and what they're about. Um, just kind of be intuitive about it and, and see what happens. Don't, don't try to be so controlling. Um, because things can happen that, that might work that you really didn't plan on. Isn't that exciting? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, enjoy. Now, is that a back side of a person these are, there? These are, yes. He's sideways. This is the back side. Okay. Which is great because we don't have to do faces. You know, somehow <laughs> with this big butt, I think this is a woman. Oh. I think so, but that's fine. And, I mean, that's great. And because usually a man has broader shoulders. If you've seen my other video about doing the human figure, you know that men have broader shoulders and thinner hips. But... This person's kind of leaning over, and I'm going to make a third person because everything in threes is actually works better. Threes or fives or odd numbers. Um, yeah, the figure outside is um, kind of really, really in strong light. Even if it's a cloudy day, it's still, the light is really different than indoors where it's, all the shadows are a lot softer. I don't know why, I always just keep making women, but it's just, they're, they're just pretty expressive to me, so I'll go with it. So maybe they're um, standing at a dock. I'm going to kind of just decide where I want this. This is not in my photo, so I'm just going to kind of make it here like this. I, don't, I hate to, do, to make lines go all the way across a painting. I'm just going to end it right here because the eye, I like the eye to be able to go into the background without being cut off, like a fence going across the painting. Some paintings, I, you know, that, it just happens. But if you can avoid it, um, it's a good design. Um, theory that you, you might want to consider. Now, have you mixed some white with the... Um, with this hooker's green? Yeah. No. No. So it's, it's just, just picking white, up... more water. There's okay. More water. Okay, so I've got my three people that are fishing. Um, he's looking at the women, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I didn't know it was going to happen. It just happened. And so I'm going to rinse my brush off. And while they're still a little bit wet, I'm going to add my first layer of clothing to them, which is going to define them even more. So um, here's like his shirt. And that's just the titanium white now. Yep. With a little bit of hooker's green picked up. Well, I was picking up because hooker's green was wet underneath it. Okay. See, I don't worry about that. Their heads are terribly shaped, but I, when I paint this guy around there, they'll, they'll be defined more. And this white paint is going to soak in. Um, it's going to soak in to that hooker's green as it dries, which is fine because that's just the first layer. She's going to have sleeves. And I think I'll put a hat, and hats um, usually just go in circles. 
like that. And uh, I think that's what I'm going to get so far. So I've got my people, and now I'm going to cut my sky around my people. Maybe figure out a horizon line, maybe like right here. I've got a lot of horizontal things going on, but I also have some verticals. So, you know, design is something that you just have to practice and practice and, um, and begin to recognize what works and what doesn't work. You know, when you paint on a big canvas, it tends to make you see things larger, for us, fresher and stronger. And um, it will free you and use a lot of paint. Don't be afraid because the more paint you use, the more you're going to get used to how paint works and what it can do for you. So I'm going to just pick up some blue, maybe mix it with a little bit of white. I've got my brush loaded. And I'm going to, I can cut a profile in with my guy. I'll have to maybe make more, um, you know, I'm going to make more of a face on him, so I'll do that, more of that later. <laughs> it's not working right now. Because it's too wet. It's wet and, um, yeah, he did, I didn't have enough dark to cut out a profile. Ah. You want to, you know... If you're going to do a sky, you don't start up here because you're not painting a wall. You want to cut in the sky directly around your main subject. And it doesn't have to be consistent. You don't have to make a pool of color and then you do the whole thing that way. Um, you know, the skies can be broken up with clouds and all kinds of changes. See, I'm using plenty of paint. I'm going to cut in. I keep, it's harder for me to do this because I'm trying to show everybody. And that's still the light blue and the white. Yep. Okay. Um, I'm just cutting in around my figures and I might do, out, you know, when I'm not filming so I can spend more time showing you things, I'll finish up the sky. But right now I just want to show you how I cut around my figures, which really brings them to life. A little bit more it defines them you know and I paint around things very loosely because that kind of recreates the the line of uh, who they are and the shape of their body and if I don't like something like maybe her shoulders sinking a little bit I can fix that later you can always fix everything so don't be don't be nervous just paint and be proud of what you're doing and also, just keep learning, and learning, and learning, and practicing, and practicing. You know, and it's not all about making pretty pictures. Just be a painter. Just keep practicing, painting, 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 and quit thinking, I need to come up and make a beautiful, pretty picture, because that's just got, that's not going to get you <laughs> many places. And. And in the 25 years I've known you, I have seen the evolution of your painting style this, and how it has changed some over the years. It's been an interesting uh, process. I'm just freaking out that it's been 25 years. Yeah. yeah really? <laughs> <laughs> I think so. I spoke. It's been actually 20. Okay. Um, I moved to Florida from Cleveland, Ohio in, um, in 2000. But it feels like I've known you all my life, Jane. Now look at I'm using this um, phthalo green mixed with white, and to get this kind of um, tropical, pretty water. I'm not sure of the skin tones that I'm going to put on my people. We're going to do that together after this dries a little bit, and um, after we we have to take a break now. I take breaks when I'm making these videos so that my paint can dry, just like I do when I'm just painting on my own. You can't just keep painting over wet paint because it's just going to create mud. And you need to take time to stand back and, and study your painting.
to look back at it and, um, and make some decisions. Look, that's really white. And that's still the th uh, phthalo? Th yeah. Okay. Okay. So you get my idea what I'm, where I'm going with these people. I'm going to paint the dock. Um, I'm probably going to go in with this wonderful color called Naples Yellow. And it just kind of, or this could be sand, I don't know. No, it wouldn't be sand, it would be a dock. And they're going to be tied together with shadow. So, so on and so forth. I'm going to take a break right now so that they dry. And, um, and then I'm going to come back and we're going to actually start working on the figure. Because I think that's what you're here for. I think this is what we want to um, explore. So I'm going to let them dry and we'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Um, I have put my reference down so I don't need my glasses to look. I was just watching what we taped and I was cracking up because I don't know what I look like in glasses. But anyway, those are my studio glasses. Anyway, I don't need them because I'm, I don't need that reference anymore. This is my painting about people outside in the sunlight, and I want it to be about the day, not so much about the people. We're, I want to describe what's going on. Um, while we were letting it dry, I went back in and redefined their um, limbs because I needed them to dry before we get back on here. I put one layer of burnt sienna on him. I'm going to lighten his skin tones so we can show you what it looks like to do light skin. I might leave them dark skin. I just love the contrast of the really dark skin and white clothing and the, the aqua sea. I just love that combo. So watch this. This is so cool. I'm going to um, really hit, I'm going to take my white and dip it into a little bit of Naples yellow just to show you the effect of the sunlight on white clothing outside. You can't get this effect with color, colored clothing, especially black or brown or something like that, but when you uh, are red. Um, but with white, you can really get the effect of dripping sunlight. So here we go, look at that. I'm hitting his, the light is coming in from here. And I'm just hitting this side. He's got his hand in his pocket. This is his short. I always put my people in white. And notice too, I added a couple buckets down here. I figured I needed something here, so I did those while we took the break. And um, I'm gonna hit the light side of her dress. Not every place, but you have to wait until it dries before you can do this. And you're just using the just white. white. It, maybe it's got a little tad bit of like a pinch of salt in the stew, just a tad bit of Naples yellow to make it have the effect of brightness. White by itself can be um, not so warm. Just some big strokes like this. And you don't need to cover the whole thing. You don't need to be stroking and rubbing and do this. Put your brush, put your paint down and let it be. You'll be way happier. It's just notes of color, one against another, that makes a painting thrive. It makes it so appealing. So, I like that. If you want to put a little shadow side, remember the color, if you've watched me before, I like light blue, I like light blue violet, and I like some Naples yellow, and a little brilliant purple, all on my brush. And I'm just going to kind of indicate that this is shadow over on this side of the figure. I used to make my shadows with just purple, and it just was too much. I'm always learning as I go. Um, and I think about that's maybe all I need to do with the with the clothing. 
Now I'm going to show you skin tone. I'm going to go to my smaller brush and I'm going to hit the first layer is going to be with um, burnt sienna. It's a nice warm. I don't like the umbers. I like siennas. And you don't like the umbers because? They're, I've been told by other painters that I truly respect um, they're just kind of not warm or cold, and they're just cool, and they're just uh, kind of kill the paint. Flat. They're blah. Yeah. Okay. It's just ugly. I don't like it. But, you know, some people do. It's up to you. So you decide. Burnt Sienna is your go-to. My Burnt Sienna. And if I want to darken it, I can go, um, I add my hooker's green to it. But see here, I'm putting in my Burnt Sienna. I'm not rubbing it. I'm just putting it down. I already did him. I'm going to lighten his skin. So I'm going to leave that there and I still am going to, I'm going to add now raw sienna. It should actually be dry, but I'm going to show you while we're rolling the film. Raw sienna, on mm. top of that, see how that's really starting to define just notes of color. They will tell you what's happening. I think sometimes we just feel like we have to explain so much. We have to show our skill. You know, the, the person that comes in and loves your paintings or, or, or is taken back by your paintings or just is moved emotionally by your paintings, it's because of what the story is you're telling them, what, uh, how you see things, the beauty that you see things, as you see things as an artist you're not really trying to explain your skill level. And once you get past that, um, I think you're going to free yourself up a little bit more, even. Because um, it's, it's um, your skill level is one thing, but just um, showing them the emotion and the beauty and just notes of color is, I don't know, that's what excites me. Now I'm going to keep going lighter with him. He should probably be dry, but let's pick up another color. Let's pick up, you know, uh, portrait pink. I just added that to my palette, and I'm going to mix it with a little orange. And um, just because they call it portrait pink doesn't mean that's skin color. And But it helps. See, I'm now I'm just adding a little bit of that on top. The figure outside in the sunlight always has an extreme dark shadow. Don't forget that. You can't make like his arm all totally light. It's got to have a very dark side. If you look at the figure out in the sunlight, you'll notice how dark it is on the shadow side. Portrait pink, a little orange, maybe some white. Right here. I'm going to go back in here. I don't want to go too far. Um, with them, I'm going to leave them dark. And I will still pop in even lighter. Now I'm going to take some red mix it with a little bit of white, maybe some Naples yellow. This should all be dry. Now, is that cad red medium that you're using? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, this should really be dry, but I'm too excited to show you. See, I'm going in even lighter. Notes of color on the light side. He doesn't read as such a dark, uh, dark skinned person, but he is dark on the one side, which makes him stand out and makes him look like he's in the sun. Now with the ladies here, I'm going to make them look like in the sun. I'm going to take the cad red light and just hit the sunny side of their skin tones and pull off the red. Beautiful warm colors. And once, once the rest of my painting is filled in, my sky, and my, you know, all this, all this other red will be covered up. They are really going to pop. And then I will just do my buckets. And I have one more little uh, bit of advice when you're doing 
figures in a row like this, and this was advice from my um, high school art teacher, who, was, who I learned the most from, is we need to connect them. They're connected with this railing here, but I'm going to connect them in dark shadow. I call them shadow puddles because we can lose our feet in the very dark shadows, and we don't have to make feet. So <laughs> um, I'm just going to go like this. And that's Hunter, or Hooker's, Hooker's Green, Green. With, with, with some um, burnt sienna. Yeah. Just going to go like that and put it under the buckets. Now the sun's coming this way, so the buckets are going to be off cast shadow like that. And then, you know, I will sit down and, um, and work on this a little bit more to finish off my sky and my pier and, um, and not say too much more because I think I've got, I think I, I mastered the feeling of people standing out on a sunny day on a dock. And then at the very end, I guess you could always go like this. Watch me, watch me ruin the whole painting. I'm going to go like this. I'm going to put a fishing pole in here, <laughs> and just maybe it's coming from there. Something like that. We'll just see. We don't know. I don't know if that if that's how she'd be holding it or whatever. But just a little fun thing that you would add at the end. So that's it um, for today's lesson. Uh, yeah, I'm going to show you something else. This is some ladies on the beach. I painted this the exact same way. You can see how they're connected with shadow um, puddles. And you can see how light I got their skin in the sunlight. Kept this one in shadow under the umbrella. But do you see how dark, the darkest part of the shadowing on their um, form, which really makes them uh, stand out. And in, you know, just, Big contrast against the sand and the surf. Okay, here, I just want to show you a sample. This happens to be hanging in my studio right here. Um, this is a landscape, and I put a figure in there. So I just kind of want to show you how I use the same technique. In, in fact, I actually just had the boats and the landscape, and it was rather boring. So I added the figure, and I did him the same way. He was totally dark, and then I added his clothes and the pole. and. Um, some tones of bright red to capture pow, some light. So my advice to you is paint what you're passionate about. Paint what excites you. And uh, paint like you have something to say, because you do. And is it true, if you are interested in art and you want to be a painter, and you are, or you are a painter, um, you see the beauty in all kinds of things that a lot of people don't see. So show them that show them and uh, I'll see you on the next video and uh, thank you oh and, and don't forget to press like and subscribe and we also have videos for sale on my website janeslifkagallery.com go to the shop page and uh, and you can purchase a class they're only $25 hour-long class paint along with me and there are 10 to select from 10 classes and, and we'll, we'll be making another one in September of 2023 that's right. <laughs> Thank you so much. We'll see you next time. Bye.